So in considering a, uh, when to treat a patient with polycythemia vera, I, I believe there are a number of important um, uh, features uh, that need to be taken into account. For me, the most important um, continues to be the hemoglobin or hematocrit, and I personally use them interchangeably, even though there's a lot of discussion about which one is actually measured by the, um, our um, uh, automated machines in the laboratory and which one um, is calculated. Nevertheless, if the patient has an elevated hematocrit over 45%, I do believe that should be a trigger for um, beginning therapy. Now, Again, when I was training, I was just told that's what we did. We phlebotomized patients, we treated them with hydroxyurea to get the hematocrit less than 45%. And there was some epidemiologic reasons why that might be um, uh, felt to be the case. There's some in vitro data suggesting blood viscosity goes up sharply after above a hematocrit of 45%. But it wasn't until the uh, publication by Marchioli and his colleagues in the New England Journal of Medicine that we actually had some data that a goal of 45% uh, hematocrit was important. In that study, they uh, randomized patients with polycythemia vera to type control with hematocrit less than 45% or less stringent control, 45 to 50%. Now the study accrued slowly, maybe because clinicians thought they already knew the answer, but in any case, it never completed its full accrual and was stopped by the Data Safety and Monitoring Committee because of poor accrual. However, in that study where patients were given phlebotomy, hydroxyurea, and low-dose aspirin in both groups to maintain those levels, there was a fourfold higher incidence of mortality due to thromboembolic events or serious thromboembolic events in patients who had their hematocrits maintained between 45 and 50 percent instead of less than 45 percent. Uh, now, an interesting corollary of that study is that there was one other feature that correlated with a lower risk of thromboembolic events, and that was actually maintaining the, hemat maintaining the white count lower. Um, and as you might expect, as you give more hydroxyurea to lower the hemoglobin or hematocrit, you're also going to lower the white count, and that may be very important in preventing thromboembolic events. And so the primary goal should be looking at preventing thromboembolic um, events by lowering the hematocrit. However, patients can also have a number of symptoms that um, are quite uh, debilitating and impair quality of life, and those symptoms um, that we've discussed previously should drive intervention. So the goals of um, therapy in uh, polycythemia vera are really to prevent thromboembolic events when, um, from happening, and when they happen, manage them to reduce the symptom um, burden uh, in patients. Those are the overlying goals. In a patient who presents with an elevated hematocrit um, and uh, as their reason for requiring therapy, typically we can start with uh, phlebotomy and low-dose aspirin. In the ECLAP study, it was shown that low-dose aspirin did help prevent the occurrence of thromboembolic events. As I mentioned um, previously, the Marchioli study performed in Italy showed that maintaining the hematocrit less than 45% with phlebotomy was important. And so patients can be potentially managed with um, just phlebotomy and aspirin um, at the initiation um, of, of treatment. Which begs the question then, well, what would require cytoreductive therapy with drugs such as hydroxyurea, um, interferon, uh, in the old days, busulfam, which we don't use uh, anymore. And there are a number of criteria. And one would be an intolerance of or poor compliance with phlebotomy. It's difficult for patients to have large bore IVs placed um, on a regular basis for phlebotomy. Patients um, can be symptomatic um, after a phlebotomy and often we'll give them back like a half liter or liter of fluid to help with the volume loss that acutely occurs during that time. It's an inconvenience to the life, their life. But I think the most devastating consequence of phlebotomy that may make, that we need to consider much more uh, closely as we move forward with cytoreductive therapies in this disease is iron deficiency. The entire goal of phlebotomy therapy is to make the patient iron deficient. Um, and we often see this. You'll see in their hemograms that the red blood cell count may remain elevated, but the hemoglobin hematocrit are in the normal range because the MCV has dropped because of the iron deficient state. 
But we have to remember that iron deficiency can cause other symptoms unrelated to anemia, such as um, dysgeusia or change in taste, mouth ulcerations, angular chelosis, um, restless legs, and even um, insomnia and short-term memory loss. And so iron deficiency should be considered uh, when choosing phlebotomy as the primary form of therapy. If the patient's receiving phlebotomy and develops leukocytosis or thrombocytosis, risk factors for um, uh, thrombosis and alternatively bleeding, um, those would be uh, considerations for cytoreductive therapy, symptomatic splenomegaly occurring. Or if the patient is just at high risk for thromboembolic events, many of us will institute the use of hydroxyurea in those patients as well, so over age over 60 in a prior thrombotic event. And then finally, other symptoms related to polycythemia vera, uh, such as pruritus and uh, night sweats uh, may not be uh, controlled with just phlebotomy and um, uh, aspirin.